where we stand firm. Um, it's been quite a day. We've been 800 people from 81 countries, and 240 of those have been UNFCCC delegates. We've reached 600,000 people through Twitter, and 800 have watched us online. So it's uh, more than what we see in this room. And if you still missed something, the videos and the articles will be on the C4 website within, within 48 hours, it says here, I think, before that. Um, as I said in the opening speech this morning, sorry, I should now go to, this is not as organized as this morning, sorry about that. Um, today, we have heard many interesting uh, statements and, and the results. If you remember in the opening plenary, Will Stefan talked about nine planetary boundaries and that only one of those are the climate. And he also said that if you're clever and if you're wise, you can build synergies that deliver the environmental system you want and you can bring people out of poverty. We also spoke and heard from Minister Camunto about some inspiration on boosting the number of trees on the planet. Further, I, one nice quote I have is from uh, the food security session where Deborah Bossio talked about not slash and burn, but slash and mulch. And uh, that this is a good example where we can probably increase both forest cover and food production. Tasso, Tasso Acevedo, um, in the drivers of deforestation, gave us some updates on the positive trends in the Brazilian Amazon. And uh, maybe soon we will talk not about the drivers of deforestation, but the drivers of the plus. We heard concerning Red Plus more specifically that on national forest monitoring systems, Jim Penman told us that, you know, it's not all, all about biometrics and reports, it's also about the communication tool, transparent and effective communication between governments and people. We heard that a broader agenda for RED was proposed, moving beyond simply measuring greenhouse gas emissions to a much more inclusive approach, engaging multiple sectors and stakeholders. And we heard when UFRO presented its report on RED carbon biodiversity and people, um, mentioned about the multifunctional landscape management for RED. In the session on forests on a cultivated planet, there was wide consensus that RED is not achievable without enhanced agricultural production and social, improved social equity. And the challenge of food security must be addressed. And RED, and this is interesting, is being viewed as a way to build national land use planning capacity, which could have effects also on agriculture. Um, when it comes to landscape, there's been a lot about landscapes today, and a, a lot of what I've said already pertains to the landscape. But I also think that it was made clear today that we are not really there to understand what exactly what we mean by a landscape or, or how a landscape approach would work. And I think this is good. We should not jump on a new landscape bandwagon. I think we should accept that there is still some discussions and some dialogue that needs to happen before we have a, a new approach, as it were. And I think Christina Figueres' words in the video that the forest day and in the future maybe landscape day are three steps ahead of the negotiator in terms of figuring things out. And, and maybe that's where we are at the moment. I think those were some, some of the highlights uh, from, from the day. There were many others. Um, but I want now to turn to speak about the coming back to the fact that Forest Day has helped to put forests on the climate change agenda. We heard that also from Tony just before. And that the mission, to, this mission we can say is almost accomplished, but the mission to deliver sustainable, climate smart and equitable growth in the green sector has barely started. We need holistic approaches, we heard that 
from Tony as well. We need to tear down sector boundaries. They obscure our view and limit our set of solutions. So next year, we will have a landscape day and we will continue to explore these topics. I look forward to that. But as I also said this morning, the forest day will certainly not disappear. In fact, we're already planning for a forest day seven, but we won't have it at the next COP. Our idea is to have forest days annually in developing countries. And this would allow policymakers and other stakeholders in particular from forested countries in these regions to attend in a more affordable way, because let's face it, this, these are expensive locations and expensive events. And I think we can, we can uh, increase the potential for capacity building this way. So stay tuned, Forest Day 7 is happening and it will be next year. I also want to ask everyone here to consider to come back tomorrow. Tomorrow is the Agriculture, Livestock and Livelihoods Day. Same location, same stage, same issues. They will look from their end what it means to move towards a landscape day. I think that's pretty much what I would like to say at this point.